Hello, and welcome. Good to have you here with me for another session of Digital Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, coming from the campus of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center. Our program is part of the Digital and Pharmacy Pathology Academy, uh, which is a joint venture between uh, the Digital Pathology Association and AstraZeneca. Uh, our case today comes from uh, the realm of GI pathology. It's a 48-year-old man who's had difficulty swallowing. And I thought this uh, allowed us to uh, review a couple of things that might be uh, useful to think about uh, when we have a patient with those kinds of symptoms. Uh, so dysphagia, or difficulty swallowing, can fall into a variety of uh, uh, categories. But one that's, I think, fairly useful is to kind of think about where is the difficulty. So for the, the more uh, upper feeling of un unable to get started, uh, that sort of uh, usually implies an oral pharyngeal uh, problem which may be structural or neuromuscular. Uh, and this uh, provokes a particular uh, category of differential, as you see with some of the head and neck uh, disorders, uh, proximal esophageal web, thyroid tumors, uh, Jenker's type type disease, uh, and so forth. In contrast, uh, the sense of uh, food getting stuck kind of halfway down, as it were, uh, may imply something more truly within the esophagus. Uh, and that was the kind of symptom that our patient was. So here again, neuromuscular issues can uh, come into play, uh, potentially things like achalasia, spasm, and so forth, or other problems with the uh, sphincter, uh, secondary to things like Chagas disease and so forth, scleroderma, uh, the things that I talk about in some of my medical school lectures. Or it can be structural, uh, which uh, may involve carcinoma or tumors, a uh, mid-esophageal diverticula, an aortic aneurysm potentially, rings, sutures, et cetera. Um, and these usually require uh, endoscopy to identify. So uh, without the uh, history of any of the uh, neuromuscular sorts of situations, the uh, patient went to endoscopy. And this is a representative image from that uh, procedure showing this uh, bul bulging mass uh, protruding into the lumen, uh, several sonometers in size, as you can see here. But significantly, uh, as you can see, the mucosa is not uh, uh, disrupted. There's no ulceration. There's no uh, hyperemia. Even uh, it, this is just a uh, almost extrinsic uh, mass that is uh, kind of uh, floating into the esophageal space uh, to uh, provoke uh, potential obstruction at times. So when we think about uh, tumors in the esophagus, uh, of course, uh, epithelial tumors are the most common. Uh, but we've indicated that this doesn't have the features of a, at least a surface epithelial tumor. So I think right away we could rule out squamous uh, disease and adenocarcinoma. However, there are some adnexal type tumors, uh, salivary derived tumors, uh, and neuroendocrine tumors that certainly could present in this fashion. Likewise, a number of uh, stromal lesions uh, can uh, be involved uh, in this sort of setting. Include muscle tumors, leiomyomas actually are fairly frequent in the esophagus, uh, as well as uh, some neurogenic tumors, uh, granular cell tumor, and so forth, as well as GI stromal tumors and rarely other uh, lesions, uh, inflammatory myofibroblastic tumor, and so forth. So uh, let's take a look at this lesion, which, as you can see, underwent pretty much an endoscopic mucosal type of dissection. So uh, here, this fragment looks fairly clear. We've got a little bit of uh, epithelial hyperplasia on the surface. And then here is our lesion, which is kind of a pink lesion with a little bit of uh, surface uh, epithelial hyperplasia. Uh, and as we look uh, further at this, we can see that uh, there's a lot of pink cytoplasm, fairly uniform uh, nuclei, a little bit of vascularity in the background. and and just kind of uh, fairly uh, homogeneous, uh, unremarkable nuclei, uh, fairly inconspicuous, um, minimal uh, nucleal, nucleoli. Uh, and then this very uh, granular appearing uh, appearance here, granular cytoplasm, uh, not uh, well-defined, not very epithelioid uh, in this image. So uh, let's uh, take a look at uh, kind of what we might see in another location, this is a related case from the teaching files uh, occurring in the 
stomach and actually producing some ulceration. This is actually the, the same diagnosis, but you can see here the morphology of these cells is a little bit more uh, neurotized, if you will, or a little more spindle-shaped, a little more particular nature, and then intervening uh, wavy uh, collagenous uh, tissue. Uh, so you're probably uh, aware we're talking about uh, likely a granular cell tumor, but just to be sure, we should re remember that uh, uh, there are a variety of spindle cell tumors in the GI tract uh, that can include granular cell tumor along with many others, uh, including the labiomas, cysts, schwannomas, and so forth. Uh, more common uh, further down, uh, but actually granular cell tumor and lyomyoma are fairly frequent uh, in the esophagus. So uh, that's something to remember, and, and this was uh, from a previous presentation on uh, this lesion uh, elsewhere in the GI tract. So this is a tumor that can occur at a variety of sites, but in the GI tract, certainly the esophagus is the most common. Uh, other very frequently identified sites include the skin and the tongue. The tip of the tongue is very, uh, very frequent. Uh, and as in our case, this may produce uh, a degree of pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia that can, in some cases, mimic uh, neoplasia if all you're looking at is a superficial biopsy. Uh, conventionally, this is just involving the superficial uh, portion of the, uh, the wall, the lamina propria, but it can extend into the muscularis propria. Now, criteria for malignancy, we'll spend more time on that in just a minute. Uh, and of course, we recognize positive stains with through PAS, S100. CD68 calretinin, uh, and then uh, some additional uh, things that we'll talk about in a moment here. So here's a nice example of a cutaneous lesion showing you this uh, very pronounced pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia. Uh, and you might see here how a, uh, a very small punch biopsy of an area like this uh, might mislead you into thinking that this is the primary disease process, the epithelial hyperplasia, because you see. Here you've got little nests of it down into the dermis and uh, very closely mimicking uh, uh, a more aggressive neoplasia. However, as we come down deeper into the lesion, we see uh, the more characteristic, uh, very granular cytoplasm, homogeneous nuclei with minimal atypia. So don't be misled by the presence of uh, um, <clears throat> pseudoepitheliomatous hyperplasia. So in addition to the stains we mentioned, myelin basic protein, which some labs have, and also PGP 9.5 uh, can be identified. Uh, markers for GIST, uh, smooth muscle, neuroendocrine tumors, these are usually negative. Uh, now, it's interesting to note that sometimes patients will have multiple tumors. Uh, and some of these do have a familial association, especially with the so-called leopard syndrome, where they have lentigos, electrocardiographic abnormalities, uh, eye problems, uh, myopathies, lung problems, genital situation, and so forth. Uh, and this obviously is related to a, a germline mutation, usually in PTPN11. Uh, so uh, I have not seen one of those cases, but uh, we certainly want to keep our eyes out for that uh, association. This is the so sort of multi-system uh, disease that should prompt some uh, genetic testing uh, and consideration of uh, various other specialties. So what do we view as criteria for malignancy? Well, uh, necrosis is one criteria. Spindle cell lesions are more frequent. Uh, large nuclei with nucleoli, uh, mitotic activity, and pleomorphism. Uh, and uh, we don't need to have all of these. So if we see you know, three of these, uh, we're going to see a greater risk of uh, mortality or at least persistent disease uh, within a particular period of time. So these are the, the criteria that are uh, encouraged. Uh, now, there was one uh, case here in my teaching set, just to, to include in this, uh, that was uh, marked uh, from the skin as being uh, malignant. So I, I don't have personal experience and knowledge of the outcome in this patient. Uh, but in looking it over, um, it's evident that we've got certainly a degree of pleomorphism uh, in this. Uh, I uh, don't think that uh, this 20x uh, image is the best for counting mitoses, uh, but in my uh, cursory review here, I was able to identify a few, uh, or at least cells that I thought might be uh, mitotic figures. Um, here's one here, um, and uh, there's a few others around as well. 
Uh, we don't have uh, particularly prominent nucleoli, but there are some cells like this which have a somewhat vesicular nucleus and a degree of nucleolar prominence in some of these cells. Uh, so uh, this certainly begins to raise concern for possible malignancy. Um, that being said, uh, I think uh, you know making the uh, flatline diagnosis of malignant granular cell tumor uh, would require a considerable degree of review uh, and uh, census, and probably in, in most people's situation, some degree of consultation with others uh, to share with you that burden of uh, labeling someone with a malignant tumor like this to get you some vesicular nuclei here uh, in this case. So uh, coming back to our case, our final di find-out diagnosis was granular cell tumor, the benign type. Um, and uh, we uh, surmise from that the patient uh, following endoscopic uh, resection will do well and should not have any uh, significant uh, follow-up uh, issues in terms of uh, recurrence or uh, spread. So if you like this, uh, please give us that thumbs up, uh, like it, and uh, particularly we hope that you'll uh, subscribe and uh, uh, hang on to uh, uh, listen for additional releases from our channel. Uh, as we have those uh, coming in the uh, uh, days to come. I appreciate your time spent with me and hope this has been useful to you, and I look forward to the next opportunity to share some of the very interesting material that comes through our laboratory uh, here on uh, Digital Technology Sign Out and Review. So until next time, thanks so much for joining